Hello everybody, I'm Adam Bilsing and this is the Oregon Drum Project and today I'm switching out the batter head of my kick drum from a Remo Power Stroke 3 to a Remo Silent Stroke. So we're going to try out these little mesh heads, see what they look like, um, see if they're useful for the Oregon Drum Project here. And uh, I'm going to show you what it looks like. So really first thing I'm going to do is take off the old head. I've had these in storage for a little while, so they're already kind of finger tight. And uh, in the old days, I sort of played the batter head of my kick drum only finger tight. I liked it to be nice and low, really punchy, without a lot of resonance for the sound person to deal with. Um, because once upon a time, everything I was playing was very backbeat oriented. Um, and the kick drum just needed to be lots of attack and not a lot of resonance. And especially for uh, when I was in the studio in Nashville, we would keep it nice and punchy and, uh, you know, add reverb and DSP and stuff later. So uh, easy peasy, right? There goes, I could talk to you, I suppose. There goes the original batter head, very normal batter head, like everybody probably has. So now we're gonna get out the silent stroke head and see what comes with it. Looks like they sent along an impact patch. At first glance, it looked like it was Kevlar, but I don't think that it is, because who's going to play a mesh head that hard? Anyway. All right, that's a little concerning, but hopefully it hangs out all right. There's a little tiny run right here in the mesh. Like if you uh, snagged your belt buckle on a screen door or something. Wow, that's a very country analogy. Anyway, this is what the silent stroke head looks like. As you can see, you can kind of see through it. It's a mesh head. It's like a screen door. It's very light. It's a little wiggly, like there's not a whole lot of body to it, but it's exactly what I was expecting. So let's sock it on here and see how this thing looks. Um, I don't know if anybody else is particular like me, but even for my own kit, even just at home, I still put the logo at the top. It's an old habit from the Guitar Center drum shop merchandising days back when I was like 20. So there we go. New head on. I'm gonna get the hoop off of here. I'm gonna recenter everything. I bet I knock one of these tension rods off of here. Hey, that's pretty good. So uh, on this hoop, I have a little protector down at the bottom for the kick drum pedal. So I'm making sure that is nice and centered and where I want it. And uh, I've never claimed to be any sort of expert on tuning drums. I'm doing my best to learn and improve as I go along. But the basic rules apply. Start with everything finger tight. And then I'll show you the star pattern that you use to go around tightening things. Once I get all these finger tight in here, I gotta say overall this looks pretty slick and uh, really I'm very excited to be playing a real kick drum again. It feels very funny to just play everything on a practice pad and uh, I miss being behind real drums. This is actually kind of a big milestone for me. I've been over a year on just practice pads now, I was really sort of exercising some self-discipline and making myself go through all of the motions of working on some very intensive hand and foot practice only on practice pads to keep myself from getting distracted. Um, I didn't want to stray off the page and start just playing rock beats for fun, even though that's kind of what this is all about. But for now, I wanted to keep things simple. So for over a year, I was working on just the practice pads. I've had the snare drum out for a while because I needed it for brush exercises. But other than that, it's really been all practice pads. In fact, today, this morning, I took down the DW Smart Practice Kit 
which had been the heart of my setup for almost this whole year now. And uh, it's gone away. It's gone, in fact. So this is a big change. Anyway, if you want to see an unboxing of the DW Smart Practice Kit, you can check the YouTube channel. Um, that's been getting a lot of views. I think it's helping people decide whether or not they want to buy that thing. There are lots of pieces inside of it, and it's kind of a unique product. So I was happy to be able to show off what all comes in the box for that one. All right, so I'm getting close to finger tight here. And as you'll notice, I'm kind of, now that I've got all of the tension rods in the lugs, I'm uh, keeping my hands on opposite sides of the drum as I go around and check the finger tightness. This is a pretty good rule of thumb to make sure that everything is the same amount of tight before you start using the drum key to actually tighten any of this down. Um, I also kind of just want to get a feel for the tension as it sets. That's real loose, so we are going to need to tighten it up a little bit. I'm going to press down gently just to seat the drum head all around the bearing edge of the drum, which is something that we should probably talk about someday, all the parts of a drum. Anyway, so now, hey, I've got my drum key, and we're going to go around and uh, do just like a little bit more tightening up to get this feeling right. I want the rebound action to really resemble a kick drum as much as it can. So uh, in these cameras, take a look at what I'm doing. I'm going to start down here at the bottom on the right hand side of this little kick pad here, uh, kick pedal pad. And this is my starting point. So I'm going to go ahead and do a full 360 degree turn of the drum key. And I'm going to do that same 360 degree turn in a star pattern all the way around the drum. So starting here, I'm going to go directly across one full turn. I'm going to go one to the right, one full turn, directly across, one full turn, one to the right, one full turn, directly across, and just continue this until I get back around to the lug that I started on. And this is the star pattern that you want to use when you're first putting on any new drum head or if you're swapping out heads or whatever. Anytime you're putting one on a drum from scratch, you want to follow the same star pattern. Uh, sort of kind of like if you're changing a spare tire on your car or something like that. So that's one 360 degree turn all the way around the drum. And as I was doing that, I could feel the glue in the drum head starting to kind of creak and uh, settle, which is very normal, very normal. I don't think that's any kind of defect. And I'm doing just a little more pressing here to really seat the rim, the hoop, the rim, whatever you want to call it, of the drum head on the bearing edge here. Make sure it's really sitting down nice and evenly right where it wants to be at home. And I can also tell in pushing this down, that I think I would like it to be just a little bit tighter. But not much, actually. Not a whole lot tighter um, overall. So I'm going to start in the same spot that I started at before, right here on the right of this little pad. And this time, I'm only going to do a half turn, 180 degrees. But I'm going to do the same star pattern around the kit, or sorry, around the drum to make sure that everything is tightened up as evenly as possible. They make some tools to assist with this kind of thing, like a drum dial and stuff like that, which are little devices that you put on the head as you're tuning it, and they measure the tension of the head itself so that you can do a little better than just doing it by feel or by ear. Um, that's the most challenging part of tuning drums is really, if we're being honest, and I don't mean anything by this, a lot of us drummers don't have the most tonal ear of all time. So when we're trying to match pitches, um, it's difficult. We don't get a lot of practice doing that. We know all about space, but not necessarily tone uh, as much. So I'm not sure how this next step is going to go with a mesh head, but in the real world with a normal drum head, what I would do next is just hit the head by each 
of the lugs and try to hear if any of them are significantly higher in pitch or significantly lower in pitch than the rest of them. And really that's what tuning is about. I'm not going to go too in depth in it here. Um, my buddy Nate Testa on Twitter does a whole lot of stuff about tuning. He's a good one to check out. And like I said, one of these days I might do a tuning video as well. So I'm going to do this next part real quick and just get it pretty close because I want to see how this thing sounds overall. Okay, I'm gonna call that good for now. I will probably continue to tweak that as I stretch out the drum head a little bit. But as they say, at the moment, good enough for rock and roll. So let's get the feet out on this thing. <clears throat> get the kick drum set up in a kick drum position. For the first time since I've left Nashville, which was the fall of 2016. This kick drum has not been properly played for Three and a half years. Something else. This is a Yamaha recording custom kick drum. I have matching rack tom and floor tom to this particular drum that I'm sure you'll be seeing in the future, but for now we're sticking to kick and snare in my setup. Um, I have a blanket in the kick drum, like lots and lots of people do. We'll see how I feel about that with the mesh head. All right, here we are on our feet. I'm going to go ahead and put the DW9000 series pedal on this guy. And this is exciting in a strange way. This is a real drum, you guys. I'm a little worried for this little mesh head and my big, stupid, heavy right foot. Oh, that sounds really funny. Okay, okay, I get it. I think that's quieter than the practice pad I was playing on. And I'll be honest, uh, that's more resonant than I expected it to be as well. I thought it was going to be real dead, um, but there's actually some tone in there. Can you hear it? Probably sounds a little bad right now because I haven't tuned the resonant head either, but we're just going to get this set up for now and I'll come back around later and tweak it. So I'm going to go ahead and put this little impact pad on here. Um, I always wait until I put the kick drum pedal on so I can see exactly where the beater hits. Jeez, maybe I'll put it on here. Silas, play some music or a cartoon or something. Hang on. All right, here we go. Impact patch. And I'm gonna go ahead and line it up right with the kick drum beater so it's effective lands right where the kick drum beater lands. Oof, I just did that totally blind to you. Okay, so that's where it sets. All I did before I stuck it on was lower the kick drum beater like that so I could tell exactly where it was gonna hit. I think I got it pretty well centered. Somehow managed to get it dirty while I put it on there. All right, so that's assembled. That's assembled at least as far as any reasonable person can expect in a 10 minute video. I can tell already that I have this thing tuned up higher than I want it to be. So I'm going to probably go back around and loosen some of those lugs I just tightened. And I'm going to mess around with the blanket inside and the resonant head to get this all dialed in like I want it. Um, like I said, my brain so far is used to hearing this sound with my right foot. And now we have this sound. I'll admit it sounds a little papery and funny, but it feels way more like a kick drum than the practice pad did already. And I get to look at this beautiful Yamaha drum while I practice. So 
That's it, I think. That is that is the Remo Silent Stroke Kick Drum Mesh Drumhead. Meant for practicing, not for performing. You can see it's pretty quiet. I don't think it's going to bother anybody, anybody when I use it at 4 in the morning like I do. And uh, the next video to follow this is going to be an unboxing and assembling of the Zildjian L80 low volume cymbals that I got to go along with all of this. So this is really a pretty big change. Um, I'd be remiss if I didn't mention, go ahead and like and subscribe below if you want to make sure you catch all the episodes of the Oregon Drum Project. We do daily deep dives into every aspect of playing the drums right here from my living room every morning from 4.30 to 6.30 a.m. That's my practice schedule. It is a little insane, but we do all kinds of fun stuff on the channel, so look back at the other videos if you haven't yet. You can also catch me over on Twitter and Instagram at Dirty Bandana, on Reddit at Dirty Bandana Drums, and you can get all the details for everything about the Oregon Drum Project at DirtyBandana.com. That's it for now. We'll see you all next time.